Hi, you're watching Patadendron. In today's video, picture this. You're a beginner, you're a new plant parent, or you're not even a plant parent, but you want to plant. I'm taking you plant shopping, and I'm telling you what to get and what to stay away from. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if you're new here, hi, welcome, I'm Patrick, and I love plants. And if you do too, you should definitely hit that subscribe button. And if you don't yet, and you want to, well then you should still hit that subscribe button. I love going on these planty adventures and taking you along with, but lately I've also been having a lot of fun guiding new plant parents into helping them pick out some really good plants that they'll end up loving for years to come. So, if that sounds like something that could be fun for you or something that could be useful for you, then definitely hit that subscribe button. In today's video, I am here in California greenhouses and we're going plant shopping. I'm just gonna tell you what to get, what to skip, what's good, what to get, what to skip, what's good. Anyways, there's lots of plants to look at, lots of traps. Let's get to plant shopping. I'm gonna start with the Diffenbachia. So, Diffenbachias are often like one of the first few plants that new to house plants people see for some reason. <laughs> Diffenbachias are just always there. And sometimes they get put into beginner's lists and I would like to beg to differ. These are actually a little harder than you would think because they'd like a little more light than normal. And I've seen a lot of sad different bakias out there. And the thing is, these aren't really that fun to grow, the bigger they get it. And these are really, really toxic to animals, to humans. So I like to keep these away. Let me suggest something else. So if you really like the color and look of a Diffenbachia when you first see one, can I suggest the Dracaena? There are many types of Dracaenas that have that similar color. There's even more colors to choose from. While these aren't as exciting to grow as other plants, it is a little more exciting than the Diffenbachia because these just aren't as demanding as far as the tropical needs go. These will stay pretty for with a lot less effort. So I bet you'd have a lot more fun growing it. This one's really cute. <laughs> Another plant that a lot of new plant growers get into is ivy. And I just don't like the way ivy grows. And I definitely, definitely don't think that you should plant these outside. As a lot of people have said in previous videos, these are invasive species. So when I do say like grow ivy outside, I mean contained in a pot or how about just not at all? <laughs> this is my, one of my least favorite vining plants. And for many reasons inside, it's just not as happy. It tends to attract spider mites and other pests. And they're just kind of there. But one vining plant that I do love so much more that I think you might also, because there's a whole craze surrounding these right now. And that is Hoya. The Hoya is a whole other genus but there's so many different, you know, like you can have a whole collection of hundreds of plants, none of them matching or have being alike and all of them being Hoya. And there's just 
a lot of like hype and excitement behind these plants and for good reason because not only do these prov like not only do these have beautiful foliage like look at the splashing on that they also put out flowers i wish i had a picture here to show you but hoya flowers are really pretty if you want to look them up you can definitely look them up after watching this video there are so many different types of hoyas so these are all hoyas and these are all just different types of pubic calyx so within that type of hoya there's different types of that so it just it just gets crazy this is the hoya curtisii and these have cute little shaped leaves i don't know what you call that shape but it's cute <laughs> and there's the hoya carnosa compacta these these are also called the Hindu rope because these curly little vines or these vines covered in, with curly little leaves. And these leaves are nice, hard, and waxy. These grow long and they turn into these beautiful ropes and it's just glorious. This is the Hoya Wyetii. This is a new, newish Hoya. I mean, not really new in general but just in the market here i'm seeing more and more of which is really cool there's the hoya obovada which has these beautiful round leaves you know oval shaped and there are some variegated hoyas too so the variegated hoyas are really pretty if you give it enough light, the new leaves come out this beautiful pink. That is like one of my favorite things about the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. The princess does that as well. See, this is the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess and the variegations on the inside. The cool thing about that is inner variegated plants tend to have different three colors of variegation, which is really pretty. That dark green, the lighter green, and then the cream. So gorgeous. And this is the Hoya Carii. The Hoya Carii has these heart-shaped leaves. Aren't that, they cute? You'll often find uh, Hoya Carii sold as single leaves, just as that, you know, like Hoya Sweetheart is what they're called sometimes and if you buy that just know that it won't grow into anything it'll just stay that way sometimes you get lucky and they plant it with a little bit of stem in there and it does grow into a full plant but more than likely no it's not going to happen <laughs> so if you do want a plant to grow with these heart-shaped hoya leaves you want to find find one with stem and leaf these are all beginner friendly i'd say with the exception to oh there's the heart leaf that i was talking about but i would say that the only exception is the hoya curtisii which i have heard is a little more finicky And these Hoya latifolias. You'll find these labeled as Hoya macrophylla, but they've been reclassified uh, to Hoya latifolia. It gets confusing. So that's another reason why. <laughs> this is like intermediate Hoya growing. A lot of new plant parents fall in love with calatheas and that's understandably so. I think calatheas are beautiful. The leaves are just something else, right? Like that, these calathea ornata with the beautiful pink stripes and these calathea medallions with their purple backsides. Just 
unreal, right? So we all, we all purchase one. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. And for the most part, it really doesn't. So if you do fall in love with a Calathea, I can suggest another plant that would be better. Maranta Lucanura. Marantas are awesome. They are really resilient for prayer plants and a lot of times they will grow back. They'll grow back a lot easier than a Calathea will too. And if you really love that pink pinstriping, there's the Maranta Lucanura Red and these have these pink stripes or red stripes and they even have the purple backsides. So, Maranta. These are also not as picky with the water. I mean, I do recommend still giving it as best water that you can give it, but in a pinch, you can totally give this tap water and it won't even notice it. <laughs> you won't even notice it. I've talked about this a lot lately. It's because I didn't realize how common it was for new plant parents to fall in love with ferns. Because I did, when I first started loving plants, house plants, and suffered a lot of loss. <laughs> But if you do love the look of ferns, I feel like other plants can achieve a similar look without being as finicky. You know, Patira aquaticas, how they have these kind of palmate leaves, but they're so much easier. And these are good luck. So, might even bring you some extra money in <laughs> and that's always welcome but Pachira Aquaticas these are really fun really pretty and so much better than ferns nice and tropical right like when they get nice and bushy looks nice and tropical say you're out plant shopping you want a new plant and you see a, wait, why can't I see it anymore? Oh. You see a beautiful croton and think, that'll be great for my house. Wrong. No, that'll be so much better outside. So if you want something with that kind of color and you want it to thrive in your home, I suggest you pick up one of these. Aglianema, get it. Any kind of Aglianema. They're all easy, they're all great, they're all beautiful. Oh my gosh, look at these beautiful traps. This is how they get you, oh my gosh, yeah. Look at all that, it's so bushy. It's saying, take me home. I'm really easy. Look at all this growth. <laughs> Don't listen to that, guys. It's a trap. But I will say I am growing one, and if you want to see how it goes with me, how long I can keep it beautiful, or how fast it deteriorates, depending on the outcome, join my Patreon. Another plant that a lot of new plant parents fall into, and they're really cute, I get it, I did too, is this Peperomia Rosso. The Peperomia Ripples, there's also Peperomia Frost. That's really cute and out to get you. <laughs> but there is another plant that I will recommend, and it's so much cuter, so much more fun to grow, and it's a lot easier too. And that is African Violets. African Violets are so fun and they're really cute too. 
They come in a lot of different colors, different flowers look different ways and they're kind of fun to collect and these will have that same growth pattern they'll fill up that same amount of space in the on your desk or shelf or whatever but I feel like it's just a plant that will last so much longer and a plant that you'll end up loving so much more in the long run even in the short run Look at this variegated African violet right there. So cute. And they usually are about the same price too, if not a little less expensive. Here in California, the going rate for these range from like $5.99 to $7.99. And these in the two inch pots are even less usually. But when I say $5.99 to $7.99, I mean for a four inch pot. So a lot of times I see cacti as statement pieces in homes. And while they are beautiful and it does like, it does really add a really cool look to it. But these plants need so much more light. As you can see, they get plenty of sunshine, even direct sun. So these won't do as well inside your dark house. And not to mention the price. These are so expensive, so you definitely want to care for this properly if you end up getting one. This Pachycerus pringlii is $2.95. And this Lophocerius Monstros is um, $9.50. So it's a pretty penny. I mean, buy it for your outside landscaping, buy it for your outdoor desert garden, but don't buy it for your inside dark cave. <laughs> Can I suggest this instead? Be prepared to be shocked. Be prepared to be surprised. Be prepared to be amazed by my next suggestion. Snake plants. <laughs> Groundbreaking, right? No, snake plants really are great. They will tolerate your home so much more. And check this out. There's so many different varieties that it literally looks like a desert paradise. There are all these little ones that stay compact. And these really are so easy. These will even grow, not as, not as fast, but it will grow in a low light setting. These are very drought tolerant. And yeah, they're not as boring because there's so many different types. Like these, I love these. The Sansevieria Bantel Sensation. Really pretty, right? Just love those muted shades. There's this one, that's the Sansevieria Whitney. And just look at that, so beautiful. And then there's this one. This one looks kind of just wild and almost prehistoric. I like that. <laughs> okay, next segment, I'm just gonna do some rapid fire. Yes, no's, get it, maybe so's. No, no maybe so's. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, Begonia Rex's traps. These are traps. Oh, this is beautiful. I like that they s they have labels. Oh my gosh. I might be going home with the trap. Um, if you were a beginner, I say no. I mean, look. <laughs> it's already, um, it's, it's already doing that thing. 
Raven ZZ. Get one. <laughs> I really love the way that the new leaves come out this really fresh green, and then it kind of hardens off into this beautiful, beautiful dark, almost black leaf. So awesome. Orchids, absolutely. These are great. Just don't water them with ice cubes, okay? <laughs> I think anthuriums, like these flamingo plants, are great for beginners. I think they're really pretty. I love the splash of color that they can provide to a space, as well as some greenery. And I don't know, these don't get enough love in the houseplant community, I feel like. Whoa, that's so cool. Those are gonna be some, those are gonna be some seeds or berries. I really like these. And if you're a beginner and these catch your eye, I think you should give it a chance. Hartley philodendrons, can't say enough good things about them. Still obsessed with them. No matter how long I've been into plants and buying plants, So yes, Hartley philodendrons, buy them. <laughs> Syndapsis pictus exotica, buy that without any hesitation. Monstera anansonii, get. Hypoestes, I'd say, nah. Syngonium of any kind, absolutely. This is still a syngonium, but look at this beautiful, is this Maria illusion? So pretty. These are caladiums. They're beautiful and they are everywhere right now because it's season but as beautiful as they are if you can't provide just the right amount of light and humidity for them I'd say pass. <laughs> These leaves are paper thin and yeah, they're, I said it, they're gorgeous. They will trap you, I'm like they're trapping me right now. But I can actually grow these because they love the grow tent. But, ooh, that's a pretty one. <laughs> not me, not listening to my own advice. For beginners, just, uh, just skip it. Lavender, I don't consider a house plant. These just do so much better outside. Ficus pumila or ficus repens. Mm, skip. Pothos, yeah. Pothos, yes. Pothos, yes. Lipstick plants, yes. Well, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. I had so much fun. I hope you learned a thing or two about what plant to get, what not to get, or if you want to say F it and buy all the traps, now you know what traps to get. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. If you like this video, you know what to do. Please throw me a bone and give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my plant videos, come plant shopping with me. Hit that subscribe button. I can't wait to see you in the next video. I just don't want to miss you too much. So if you could show me some love in the comments, then I'll meet you there. Bye.